We are back on the road to City Hall. My next guest formerly served as chair of Manhattan's Community Board 1, where she helped Lower Manhattan rebuild following the September 11th terror attacks. Now she's trying to win a crowded Democratic primary and become Manhattan's next borough president. We welcome Julie Menon back to the program. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Aaron. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, you've got a whole lot of stuff going on, but let's take people back 10 years. Not everybody knew you from that time, which yes. is, I guess, around the time I started hearing about you um, right after the September 11th attacks. Yes. Well, basically, Errol, I really didn't come up through the political process. I never set out to run for office, but 9-11 literally turned my life upside down. I was a small business owner in Lower Manhattan. I owned Vine Restaurant, which was located a couple blocks away from Ground Zero. My business was completely devastated on 9-11. All the windows were blown out. We had that white, grayish ash everywhere. Mm. We were in the frozen zone. My home was there. I was evacuated from my home. And several weeks after 9-11, I started a key community organization, Wall Street Rising, to really help rebuild downtown and we did some of the earliest programs to help lower Manhattan get back on its feet fighting the insurance companies who frankly were not doing the right thing by small businesses making sure that small businesses and residents stayed in lower Manhattan and really at the time everyone counted our neighborhood down and out and said people aren't going to want to live downtown again they're not going to want to work downtown again we're now the fastest growing residential neighborhood in the city with 30,000 new residents we're the fourth largest commercial business district in the country and, and that is after having lost 60,000 jobs after 9-11. We've also been able to build three new public schools in the last five years more than any other neighborhood and, uh, throughout well, Manhattan. All of that growth actually calls, in, uh, calls up one of the big issues the next borough president and frankly the next mayor are going to have to deal with, which is that explosive growth in population down in the Wall Street area, buildings that have been converted from commercial to residential. And uh, I keep hearing from folks down there kind of a lack of amenities when it comes to some of, some of the basics for this explosively right. growing new community. And that's really what we tried to do at Community Board 1. I chaired Community Board 1 for over seven years. We were able to get these new schools, new community centers, new parks, new ball fields, as well as affordable housing. We rezoned Northern Tribeca for inclusionary zoning so we could build more affordable housing. Those are many of the functions, obviously, for the borough president. I mean, the reason I'm running for Manhattan borough president is I believe we need very strong leadership in our borough in 2013. I want to be able to take so much of what we've been able to do in Lower Manhattan and take that borough wide because, quite frankly, if you look at north of 96th Street, the unemployment numbers are double what they are south of 96th Street. We need to be able to tackle that head on. And one of the key visions I have for the Borough President's Office is to reform our land use process. Borough President Stringer has done a terrific job as Borough President empowering the community boards. Now we need to build on that and reform land use. And so what do I mean by that? Basically, when you look at public schools, so many of them are overcrowded with 30 kids in a class, no science room, no art room, kids eating lunch at 10, 20 in the morning. None of that is acceptable. We've got a lack of affordable housing and middle income housing. We have a shortage of parks and open space and health care facilities. As borough president, I would want to be able to do a borough-wide plan for the borough, a master plan, if you will. Cities all across the United States are doing this, Philadelphia, Seattle, L.A. We're not doing it here in New York. We're not being proactive enough about saying as a community, what should we do to build new school seats? What should we do to build more affordable housing? And particularly on the subject of affordable housing, I have very strong feelings because... Isn't, isn't there, I mean, uh, I know the individual community boards and the, the borough board to a mm -hmm. certain extent, they, mm -hmm. they're called, you know, we call them community boards, they're community planning yeah. boards. Yeah. I mean, each year they put out... If nothing else, a wish list of, uh, they of what they and a, and a list of the problems that they're facing. You're talking they about do. what consolidating all I'm of them. I'm talking about a borough-wide plan, a thoughtful, proactive plan. Because right now, when land use projects come before the community boards, community boards have 60 days to be able to respond. And sometimes we have to scramble to say, well, what is this project going to do to the neighborhood? How many new school seats do we need? How much affordable housing? I think we need to be proactive as a borough because the borough is growing. We're at approximately 1.6 million people in the borough by 2013. It's going to be approximately 1.83. So in terms of development, we have to make sure that it's working for communities all across the borough. And that is what a master plan would do. We have a 50-year outdated zoning code. We need to make sure to bring this into the 21st century and make sure that we're building affordable housing and building new schools when, and when, parks and health care. One of the areas, it's, it's, there's a big write-up in the paper about it today, is the idea of uh, rezoning the area around Grand Central. Yes. And, um, 
There are those who are saying it's going too fast. The mayor's trying to get this all done before he leaves uh, office. What do you think about that and what would you do about I it? I think it is going too fast. I really believe in community-based planning and that means community input. So community boards four, five, and six have their tri-borough uh, task force on this. I have been meeting with them. I've heard their concerns and I think that they've raised very valid concerns that it is moving too quickly. With that said, we do need to update this office space. Obviously, some of it is outdated and it needs to be updated, but it has to be done in a way where we hear from community input. I'm on the board of Municipal Arts Society. We've put forward a number of recommendations for the id, um, for the zoning that mm -hmm. I think really need to be taken into account. Is, is the notion of selling development rights, air, air rights at $250 a square foot when it's selling for $600 a square right. foot, uh, is that a giveaway? Well, I think to some extent it is a giveaway, and that's why the community boards and the community groups and the Municipal Arts Society have raised concerns. No one's saying do not do this at all. People are saying, wait a minute, let's slow down. Let's have the proper community input. Let's see what this is doing to transportation infrastructure all around Grand Central. These are the kind of considerations that really have to be brought to bear. When you, when you talk about borough-wide um, planning, like a master plan, it sounds, right. sounds rational and it sounds... Um, like it would take place without a whole lot of fighting. We know uh, New York and Manhattan, of course, very different. And, and there's been this dynamic that's been going on, and I'm sure you dealt with it right after the September 11th attacks, where, you know, developers and other players involved here think that if you do a lot in lower Manhattan, it's going to be to the detriment of, say, you know, the west side of, uh, of Midtown. That's why we um, need a master plan, because so many times I think communities are looking in, in a very granular and narrow sense. If we had a master plan that is forward thinking, we would be able to address a lot of those issues. We also need to focus on job creation. I mentioned earlier the unemployment numbers north of 96th Street. I have visited all of the job centers north of 96th Street. I think we need to open more. I think they need to focus on workforce development. I think we need, as a former small business owner, and I had a small business with over 75 employees, we need to be doing more to support our small businesses. And there are a number of different ways we can do that. First of all, there's so many fines and licenses that small businesses have to apply for. They should all be automated and online. Secondly, we really need to make sure that we have expediters in the Borough Presence Office who's helping small businesses navigate the various city agencies that they have to grapple with. Those are some of the many things that we need to do. And we need to market communities. This is what we did in Lower Manhattan. We had almost no foot traffic in Lower Manhattan and we were wow. able to bring uh, it back uh, as, through as a, marketing. I, I, I'm a Brooklynite but I would suggest to you that there are many parts of Manhattan that have plenty of foot traffic. Theater but, district, but, not looking for any new customers, right? But I do, Times Square, not looking for I any new tourists. But I do think, for example, uh, in, in Harlem and in Washington Heights, there is so much that we can be doing to make sure that we're supporting small businesses, which are the backbone of our neighborhood. And I really feel very, very strongly about that. Okay, fair enough. That. I got uh, one last question because we're just about out of time. The, uh, the 91st Street uh, uh, Transfer Station, which is really mm -hmm. part of a larger sanitation plan right. that the mayor has it's a 20 year plan and so Absolutely. forth but that community of course has a, a lot of objections and a lot of concerns there are some countervailing concerns about whether or not manhattan should have any transfer stations because right now all of the garbage from the borough gets shipped elsewhere what, what do you think about that? Well, I do believe every borough has to take care of its fair share of trash, which is why we have a borough equity plan. You cannot put all of these um, facilities in lower income communities. With that said, residents of the Upper East Side and I, I have three kids and one of my sons uses asphalt green. They've obviously raised concerns, community concerns about the traffic, about the vehicles and what this will mean for the community. And those need to be taken into account. But the bottom line is you do need to make sure that every borough takes care of its fair share. This this plan was uh, put into effect years ago. The time to really look at alternatives was honestly several years ago. And so I do think I hear the community. I know they have concerns, but we need to really look comprehensively. And by the way, that's another reason why if we had a forward looking master plan for the borough, we would be able to address that. We've been able to do that in lower Manhattan and we can do that in communities all throughout the borough of Manhattan. Okay, that's going to be the last word for now. You, you are in a Democratic primary a bunch of, uh, against a bunch of other people. and um, we we will see you out on the campaign trail. Thank you for coming Thank by tonight. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to take a short break. Still to come, we'll look at the efforts to create a new state registry for violent gun offenders. Also, Governor Cuomo says he's willing to consider legalizing ultimate fighting in New York. Find out what Herson Barrero and Curtis Lee would think about that and more in our political rundown. Stand by. We're back in a minute.